everyone. Welcome to tonight's Big Brother 25 chat. Oh, hi. It's episode two. That's my line. Okay. <laughs> Take it away. All right. So last time, 16 fresh, young, plucked house guests mm -hmm. were plucked from society and thrown into the house. Oh, my goodness. But there was a 17th house guest. And Sari! Sari! Sari is in the house. And you... she is the 17th house guest. Very exciting. You may know Sari from Survivor or The Traders. Snake or... in the Grass. We didn't see that one yet, but I haven't Traders... seen that. Oh, I thought you just made that up. No, it's a real <laughs> show. All right, well, she's one of the best. Yes. And uh, we already have four noms. We don't have an HOH yet, but we do have four noms. Yeah, there were four different competitions on premiere night, and the loser of each became a nominee. There was the scary one. There was the humiliating one. There was like the, the Spice Girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was the, um, I don't know. Scramble comic and comics. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, So, the four losers, a.k.a. nominees, we've got Jared, mm -hmm. we've got Kirsten, Felicia, and Corey. Oh, no. And Corey was dragged away. Drag him. Into the nether region. <laughs> It's not Julie's butthole. No! All right, so Jared and Sari, in case you didn't know, if you were under a rock, they're mother-son. Well, you know who did know immediately? Uh, yeah, <laughs> Izzy. She knew before Sari was even there, but seeing Sari confirmed it for her. <sighs> she apparently is an Instagram stalker. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. Like, I know that she's a Survivor fan, but I didn't realize, like, it was I like mean, that. I mean, I've been known to stalk a few Instagrams. Of but course, like, but, like, enough to, like, recognize somebody's no, son like that? No. That's crazy. No. So, Izzy calls out Jared immediately in front of, like, everybody, but everybody was just so, like, ah, nah, nah, nah. Yeah, I mean, they I didn't notice. I guess it wasn't as audible as it was to us, because, of course, Big Brother can, like, turn up certain people's mics, and, like, we hear it more. I mean, but... I'm, I'm sure Bowie Jane heard it, but she doesn't know what the <laughs> hell's going on. <laughs> She's in another planet. Um, yeah, but Izzy was all like, Jared, come here right now. You're Sari Field's son. And I saw it, Bowie was looking right at her when she said that. And it I was seemed just like, like she oh, was within shoot. earshot of a lot of people. It was but like wild. we said, she doesn't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know what ends up. So Jared was all like, you better keep your mouth shut. Uh, well, Izzy. I think he promised me that you'll keep your mouth shut. Izzy is all about working with Jared and Sari. And of course, she knows like by doing this, by keeping this secret, mm -hmm. she's got a power over them. She's the only one... Who has this knowledge mm -hmm. and if she were to spill that yeah it could really mess things up for jared and sari so they're like kind of forced to work with izzy at this point yeah all right so let's just talk about the rooms in the house okay we got the scary verse Ugh, why so many baby heads in jars i don't know but that's pretty scary <laughs> that was a lot we have the comic verse love it everything is like bright jagged colors like mm -hmm. a migraine headache with the, Hell yeah. with the aura mm -hmm. and then we have <laughs> the yeah aura. then we have the humiliverse where you got to kick yourself in the butt Okay, somebody in Big Brother production has, like... An ass fetish? A kink or something. Because <laughs> this is not, not the first time that we've seen this show up. Yeah. Not just in the series, but in this season. Right. But what's going on here? Kick or maybe in the butt. there was some sort of a sale on these contraptions, these giant boots. I don't know. I don't know. But, like, it's a, it's a thing this season, apparently. Yeah. So, that also has, like, weird-ass beds, like cheese. I love that uh, cheese wedge. The hot dog bed looks like fun. The hot dog bed looks pretty cush. <clears throat> Isn't there one that's just like a slab that's like hanging hanging there? That might be pretty nice too. That's like a little baby quib. I mean for all of these you're gonna have to have like a layer underneath you for support. I miss my mom. I want to be in the, <laughs> in the baby quib. Ooh. Except Jared doesn't miss his mom because she's there. Ah! Yeah it's pretty wild. So he doesn't get to stay in the baby quib. Mm. All right, so then what did we leave out? Uh, the upside-down bedroom from Scrambleverse. I think that's a fun design. 
You got the tin ceiling on the floor. You got mm -hmm. the dressers upside down. If it was a real Big Brother house, they would have the crappy ceiling on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget that from season 23. I like the one with the hospital beds. Oh, it's creepy. But it's really creepy. Just the, on the ceiling thing, I did notice that when they showed the ceilings this season, mm -hmm. I think it was during the, the house tour with Julie, they, they did were, not forget the ceilings this they time. They were nice. <laughs> All right, well, who's bonding already? We've got some immediate connections here. There was definitely a bond between Jag and Riley. Yeah. They were, like, juggling together, getting to know each Maybe other. Maybe they're both secret geniuses. Maybe. No, honestly, I think they both have really positive energy. Mm -hmm. And I think um, they're... So the yellow Labradors. They're both labs, yeah. Okay. We got Cameron and Red. The hair daddies. Country boy, I love you. <laughs> All right. And I we... mean, it's country boy and, like, chill Billy. So they're kind okay. of vibing, I they're guess. They're both former military. Yeah. They're both hair, hair dads. They both have... Uh, well, they both have kids, so, mm -hmm. like... There's that. Uh, yeah. Then there's Jared, Izzy, and Sari. Okay, so, like, <laughs> Sari is in the storage room with these two, and Jared refers to Sari as... Hi, Mom! Mom! <laughs> in front of Izzy. And Sari's like, boy, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> she must have, like, pooped her pants in that moment. Yeah, she looked like, she was just like, wait, whoa. But, like, okay, you already effed up in the first hour or whatever. But he was like, okay, um, she figured it out. She stalks you on Instagram, so. If anybody's to blame, it should be Sari for posting so many damn pictures of her son <laughs> on Instagram when she knew that he was going to be on the Big Brother show. Well, I'm sure she didn't know that years ago. Has she been stalking her that long? I mean, sari has been on TV for a long time. That's true. You know? Well, but anyway, keep Izzy, it private, lady. Izzy was like, I promise you, I want to work with you. I want to keep you both safe. Like, let's do this. And I genuinely believe that. I think she really does want to work with both of them. Yeah. But ugh, right out of the, right off the uh, the starting block there for Izzy to be like, I know who you are. It's like, oh, because they were really planning on trying to keep it under wraps. Do you think that they will be successful? Um, no. I don't know. I think it's going to come out eventually. I think somebody's going to look at the two of them one day somebody's and be gonna like, pieces together. wait a minute, you guys kind of look alike. Mm. <laughs> like I think also, like, eventually their games are going to become so intertwined and, like, maybe one of them is going to do something that would appear to be out of character game-wise. Right. To save the other, and it's going to be a bit of a giveaway. But we'll see what happens. You never know. I will give it to week three. Oh, you think it'll be that soon? I do. Okay. All right. So it's time for the living room toast circle. Yay! I look forward to this every season. It's like the pancake breakfast. We do it every we season. We do it every season. Introduce yourself. All right. So who's lying? Who's telling truths? Get out that champagne. Did they get... Additional champagne to the one that Sari poured when everybody was I mean, walking in the house. You gotta have more than one bottle. It's seventeen people. No, I know, but like <laughs> they had a toast when they first got in the house. Then when they were like, "All right, let's make our ass imprints on this sofa," we need more champagne. I don't know. This is Big Brother, though. They're very or stingy is this with like alcohol. Drink of your choice. Like, Could you be. have an orange soda. Toast with what you have. Yeah, I have a water. <laughs> Me too. All right. Yeah. So. We find out that Red, the Chillbilly, has delivered all three of his kids. What? <laughs> he, he snatched them out of there. I mean, like, From like the Blue was saying, good for you, but, like, couldn't be me. No. <laughs> Hell no. Uh, right in the middle, I think, of Felicia's, uh, like, hi, I'm oh. Felicia. It, the scary thing went off, like, bleep, bleep, uh, bleep, bleep. What? And the and Corey got shot out in the nether region the way back that into they the house. edited this was insane <laughs> with the bed like sliding out through the wall. Like it was a morgue. Yeah, it was weird. But where was Red to birth Corey from the nether region? <laughs> I don't know. He said, I've already delivered three. I don't know if I can do a fourth. I don't know. But yeah, that kind of sucks that Corey had to miss out on the first bit of introductions there. He was missing out on primetime Big Brother. Did he miss out on anything? I, I mean, don't I'm know. sure they filled him in, but I mean. That's a bonding moment. He's kind of a little bee in the house, isn't he? Oh, so, God. who cares? 
I'm uh, pretty sure he called the live feeders losers today. Ouch. I don't feel great about that. No. Uh, all right. Um, well, anyway, Corey is back in the mix. And he didn't really say too much about the nether region, even, like, to the viewers. Like, we didn't get to see it. We didn't get to hear anything about it. Julie probably said, if you say anything, don't. Because you better keep your mouth shut. <laughs> well, he did return with a note. Oh, from he beyond. had a note pinned to his shirt. Just yeah. like a little little boy on the first day of school. Mm -hmm. It said, Corey uh, had to miss school. He had to miss the toe circle because he was pulled into the nether region for a short time. Mm-hmm. But one, next time, one of you won't be so lucky. I think lucky. it said next week. Next week. Well, I don't know what's going on there. I think that means who's ever evicted is going to the nether. You think so? Yeah, because this is a hundred freaking oh, days. Oh, that's true. That is true. They're going to be in sequesti. Yeah, that's a good point. It could be. Mm-hmm. Interesting. <laughs> All right, well. So, I think there was a lot of speculation that uh, Corey may have gotten a power in the nether region, but now that we're seeing this, I'm thinking no. No. I think we would have seen it on the show. All right, let's get back to the toe circle. Okay. We have Me Cole. Mm-hmm. Also known as Me Me. Me Me. Julie, pay attention. <laughs> Julie, this is going to be those very nicknames. important when it comes time for the first vote and somebody says, oh, I vote for Me Me. But she's um, not in danger. Or the second vote. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she's not in danger for the second one either. I, I like her. Any of the votes. All right. Well, anyway, in the future. Well, we find out that it's Riley's birthday because they've only told us over two episodes and in the uh, pre-show interviews. It's her birthday. Happy birthday, Riley. Anybody 24. Want cake? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So she's as old as Big Brother. I wonder if that's significant. Isn't she older than Big Brother? Is it 23 years or 24? It's 23. <laughs> I'm going to strike it out tonight. It's all right. It's all right. All right. Well, when Riley stood up and was like, hey, it's my birthday. Matt was all, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and he seems interested. He likes the eyes. He likes the blonde hair. He likes the nethers. No. All right. Well. Anyway. When Matt stood up, Izzy was all like, oh, I like girls, but Maybe I like point point something one percent percent of Matt. <laughs> He's I'm, pretty hot. I'm not going to lie. Izzy's pretty funny. She is pretty funny. I'm enjoying her so far. She's also very hectic. Yes. Uh, she a, likes calling Kirsten a, an agent of chaos, but, like, she is Izzy's also an agent of chaos. Always. Bleh. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Bowie lied about her age. She went along with her plan to say that she was 34. And I was just like, what? Girl, that feels like a bit of a stretch. Did anybody even care? Nobody seemed to really flinch at that. Maybe they're like, oh, she's Australian 34. Or like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> What, you mean like the money is different like from our money? <laughs> Maybe. So like, There's an exchange rate. 34 or... in her age is like 45 in our age? Maybe. All right, well... She also didn't mention that she's a lawyer. She only said that she's a DJ, so... Would they believe that she's a barista? <laughs> Barrister? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like getting to know her, they'd be like... No way. No. Excuse me. Uh, I feel like I just heard her talking on the live feeds, and she was like, I'm the only one in this house who doesn't know the game. Um, I think there's more people that don't know the game, but like... Hopefully she learns it. <laughs> She's absolutely a recruit. Oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. 100%. Like somebody was out at the club and they were like, hey, DJ. DJ, you want to be on Big Brother? <laughs> and she was like, yeah. DJ BJ. <laughs> That's right. Um, all right. Hysom. He said that he was a nurse's assistant. He is lying. He's a doctor. <laughs> And Chris, uh, Kirsten lied. She lied about, about her mission. profession as well. She said that she was a swimsuit designer, which, which is, true. is true. But the lie detector test said you forgot to mention that you were a molecular biologist. Yeah, I mean, I don't see why that would need to be hidden. I guess she just doesn't want people to know that she's smart. But like, it's not like that is going to affect gameplay. You know what I mean? Like, okay, you're smart, but like, in what way? Like, I could see uh, an under undercover uh, police officer or whatever. Like, that, yeah, that has an effect on the game, for sure. Because yeah. those are skills that you will use in this. 
She killed the smart vibe by not stopping talking since the minute she walked into the house to like she still right hasn't now. Stopped. <laughs> It's it's incredible. I've never seen anyone mm -hmm. talk so much on this show. Yeah, as her. It's a lot of talking, and everybody is it's grating on them. They're finally realizing it. Mm. And then Sari was like, "I have three kids, and their names are blah 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 and Jamie." No, Jared. <laughs> I mean, obviously. <laughs> is Jared Jamie or I, is Jared some other name? I'm not sure. I would guess that Jared is equals Jamie because... People who have kids usually say them in order. And Jared like, is the youngest, yeah. right? So so he's Jamie. Okay. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the Humiliverse because that's where the four have-nots are going to be spending oh their first week. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so they asked for four people to be have-nots this week. Mm -hmm. There were volunteers. It didn't have to get nasty. Corey said, I volunteer. He's like, I don't have a bed yet anyway, so I guess I'll do it. Luke was like, okay. <laughs> Hysom was like, Okay. Down to clown. Yeah. And Jared also volunteered. And I remember Sari asking him at one point, like, why did you do that? <laughs> why would you bring that on yourself? And Jared, with that survivor mentality, was like, I wanted to volunteer just in case there was some sort of a power or an advantage up for grabs. Uh, have you seen the show? <laughs> There's not. All right. Well, everybody went up to check out the, the have not room. Yes. We saw the, bed, the cheese bed and everything. But also... Um, every time somebody leaves the have-not room... Even just, though they're not a have-not. Yes. Just anyone. if you're in the room, when you leave, you have to spin the wheel and then kick yourself in the butt. Up to 25 times. Yikes. That's Ouch. Yeah. Does that, like, hurt or is I it, don't know. I mean... Is it, like, just a thing? It or? might hurt if it's on the hole. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you gotta I make sure you line it, it up. It depends so how tall you cheek. are, maybe. Yeah. Like, what if it, like... What if it's kicking you in the kidneys? Ugh. I don't think anybody's that short. I don't know. All right, <laughs> well, Suri and Jared are sitting around, and he's like... I think people are going to suspect something's up between the two of us if we're, like, avoiding each other. Yeah, so. I mean, they have to find that balance so that they're not tripping off any mm -hmm. uh, any alarm bells here for people. Right. And Suri is all, like, uh, tearing up, oh. you know, like, her baby boy is in the house. Playing this little game. <laughs> well, okay. It's really sweet to hear her talk about her son, for sure. All right, well, let's talk about the alliance that her son is in. Okay. Is it the phalanx or phalanx? It's whatever or... you want it to be. Because it's bullshit. <laughs> it's the phalanx five. Okay, Kirsten found herself in a room with Riley, Luke, Matt, and Jared and was like, it's you know, she's up on the block already. Yeah. She's feeling the heat, feeling like she wants to get some numbers together. Mm -hmm. So... Luke is all like, let's call it the Phalanx Five. Like, it's got you, everybody with their shields and their spears. It's impenetrable. <laughs> okay. So they all put their hands in and yell, Phalanx Five. Why would you yell Woo! the name of the alliance you just created? Girls Gone Wild. Exactly. Like, what are you doing? They're drunk. Well, there's a few people. <laughs> Too much champagne. Yeah. There's a few people in this alliance already who are just like, this isn't anything, right? <laughs> Jared, Riley, they're both like, is this anything? No. No. All right. Well, Sari knows that she's got a target on her back already. Mm hmm I mean, she's a survivor legend coming into this game. And uh, she's pretty happy when Kirsten approached her mm -hmm. about getting something together. It was supposed to be yeah. Kirsten, Sari, Felicia, and Nicole. I mean, you got to take any chance you can get when you have a target on your back, except when your son tells you we can't trust Kirsten. Oh. Yeah, I mean, Jared lets Sari know, hey, Kirsten's running around making, like, multiple alliances here. Kirsten's going around the house <laughs> making deals. Yeah. With <laughs> so that was definitely a wake-up call for mm -hmm. Sari. She was like, oh, crap, we can't trust Kirsten, and she shares this information with Felicia, and Felicia's also pissed. She's like, this girl's trying to start an alliance with us, but she's also starting one with other people. Like, we can't trust her. 
But can we trust Jared when he goes to Riley and is like, hey, I'm in a secret alliance and blah and blah and blah and you are in it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's coming up later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another All day. Right. All right. Well, it's time for the HOH comp. Okay. Are you ready? We need a captain of the ship. <sighs> the noms are sitting out. So they're not going to even be playing. Yeah, it wouldn't make sense if they were able to play for HOH when they're already up on the block. We've seen this comp already. And it's the one with the multiple balance beams. Balance beams, choose your journey. Are you going to take the thickums or the skinny bitch? Mm -hmm. The skinny bitch is shorter, but the thickums is longer and more stable. Well, this also has other obstacles in the way with these, like, swinging... What would you even call that? Pendulums. Obstacles? Yeah. Um, Pendulum signs. So this HOH competition is unique, though, because the winner of this comp is not just, like, making two fresh nominees. They are going to be pulling two of the four people nominated off the block. Or are they just reaffirming the nominations of two of them? Either way. It's confirming it. It depends like if you're Supreme half Court. glass full or half empty. I'm empty. All right. <laughs> I'm dead inside. Oh. Yeah, I know. All right. So it's a it's in the comic verse because mm -hmm. I guess we have to say what verse it's in or whatever. Okay. And uh, who was up first? Yeah, she was knocked off a few times. I think she like actually got hurt. It looked like she came down hard on her coccyx oh, yeah, on one that of them. did not look Maybe good. hit uh, her elbow or something like that another time. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, that's... The, I hate when they have competitions like this. This it's, is definitely... dangerous. This, no helmets. Yeah. This balance beam one always makes me cringe because you know somebody is going to have some spectacular ass fall. It's all fun and games until somebody sues the show. Mm. Well... You know? Blue's time was really bad. It was it like, was. what, a minute and a half or something like that? Yeah. Uh, Red also got, oh, I'm sorry, Cameron got knocked off also. Mm -hmm. Not as spectacular, but he did get knocked off. Uh, Red was falling. And Red he did like tried a, to go under the pendulum. That was it, wild. And it really knocked his ass over his head. Yeah, I mean, he did like a backwards somersault at one point. A fish roll, if you will. It, yeah, it didn't do him any good, mm -hmm. but... America threw it because she's not wanting to win the first HOH. She already won her um, her first challenge on premiere night, and she was like, I don't want to get a target on my back and by winning another one. I mean, I think that's pretty smart. Yeah. I mean, she's not, like, in danger right now, so makes sense. Riley <coughs> did really well. She decided to go on the blue course which is really like the easiest it's one the thickums right mm -hmm. uh, but it's longer but but it's more stable yeah i mean compared to trying to go past the obstacles and all that uh clearly she made a good choice <laughs> yes because her time held up and she ended up winning the hoh comp yeah high sim was the, the next closest but Get me to that refrigerator with the booch, man. That's all I want. <laughs> yeah, Riley. I want to my pants. First HOH of the season. She's looking for that peanut butter in the basket. And the booch. Yeah. All right, so Felicia. She's not wasting any time. She's already on Riley, mm -hmm. chatting her up. And she's, she's like, throwing somebody, Kirsten under the bus. Somebody. I'm not going to name names, but I am. <laughs> it's Kirsten. Well, she was, yeah, I mean, I think Riley knew immediately what she was talking about she yeah. didn't even have to say that she's uh she's going around talking a lot of crap about a lot of different groups of people well pretty much everybody is agreeing that chris kirsten needs to go yeah or that kirsten is the one that's going to be going i feel really bad because i do think that she brought a lot of this on herself but it bums me out because i just feel like she's up against like this insurmountable it, thing at this point. It bums me out that she was put on the block by losing. Yeah. Not being nominated. But if there is some sort of a holding tank after this life, mm -hmm. when second life kicks in, she might have a chance to come back. So you like, never know. Yeah. So it's no biggie. You know what was a lot of fun? What? Sari. <laughs> <laughs> talking about Jared and who she she was talking to Riley, right? Yeah. And she was like, "Oh, he seems like a really respectable guy." I want my kids to hang out with him. <laughs> ah! 
He's somebody I want my kids to hang out with. That he's a cool guy. Good. He's a stand-up guy. Yeah, so that was a lot of fun. Yes. So then Riley and Corey were chatting. And, uh... Corey, yes. uh, I have to say... Uh, as this was happening, at first, Riley was planning on taking Jared and Felicia off the block mm-hmm. and leaving Corey up next to Kirsten. But once she was able to talk to Corey, Corey was like, oh, you're my person, like, I want to work with you, blah, blah, blah. And that really resonated with Riley, and that was when she kind of, like, changed up her plan a little bit. that maybe he was just saying that because he was on the block? Um, I mean... I feel like Riley wants to work with everybody, so that's part of it. Does she have a crush on every guy? Mm. But I do think that Corey was genuinely st- trying to start something up with Riley as well. He didn't have a lot of game chats prior to that because mm. he did miss out on that, Right. you know, first, first, few hour, first hour or whatever. <laughs> He's already uh, on the second the house. Life. Yeah. All right, well, it's time for the Riley nomination, unnomination ceremony. Okay. And uh, what did you think of Jared's bandana? He wore it like a little babushka. He's been wearing it a of, lot. Like, behind the neck. I love the look of it. I really do. However, I think he needs to stop wearing it because every time he wears a bandana, we just see face, mm-hmm. and that face and that is serene. <laughs> Yeah. He looks so much like his mom. That's so true. I yeah. wonder if uh, Ceree's going to go and slap it off his head. Like, Take off that bandana. Why are you doing this? Yeah, I mean, he's just, he's not doing himself any favors. Look there. in the mirror. <laughs> All right, so uh, Jared and Corey are removed mm-hmm. from the block. You saw that little smile from Corey, that little smirk? That pissed a lot of people off. Yeah. There were a lot of people talking about it after the ceremony. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Riley, I thought did a good job of explaining, I like so. you know, I'm sorry that I have to keep two of you on the block, mm-hmm. and you know, I know you didn't, you know, it's the beginning of the game, and you didn't really play all that much yet, and I don't have a lot to go on. And yeah, that was nice. You well, know, she could have just said, "I hate you, two ass faces." <laughs> She, she did didn't. talk to Felicia beforehand and let her know that she is a pawn this week. Mm-hmm. Her target is Kirsten. Uh, but Kirsten seemed a little bit surprised to still but be up Phalanx there. Phalanx 5? She What's thought going on? that that Phalanx 5 alliance was going to save her, but it's it BS. Did it. Yeah, it's not for real. All right. I liked uh, when Corey was in the diary room and he was like, after the terror of this whole season finally i can i can breathe a little bit i'm off the this block. was on day three he's acting like they've been in there for months already i'm sure he was trying to be sarcastic was he i don't think he was <laughs> but anyway that's where we're at kirsten and felicia are up on the block we've got the pov still to go it oh. happened in real time so if you're not already watching the spoilers check them out if you want to be spoiled yeah we will be back with a new spoiler live stream tomorrow yeah <laughs> should be fun <laughs> gotta catch up on what happened over the weekend oh a lot there was a lot going on there's yeah. lots of yelling in the other room too i have no idea why all right well let us know what you think about all this in the comments and until next time much, much love, love.